Eel the Bay does an annual beach report card and um, that is focused on bacteria pollution at beaches all up and down the state. This year, Clam Beach in McKinleyville was the top worst beach for bacteria pollution. It's been on the Beach Report Card's top 10 dirtiest beaches for three years in a row, uh, but this year it got the distinction of being the worst, number one worst beach. Bacteria pollution, it's basically from the feces of warm-blooded animals. We use what we call indicator bacteria to detect it, but um, that is just an indication that there could be all kinds of um, what we call pathogenic or disease-causing bacteria and viruses that are in poop. In the history of urban development, stormwater was something that was typically considered a, a problem to get rid of. They channeled stormwater through engineered hardscapes and basically channeled it straight to the bays or the streams as quickly as possible. So that's the exact opposite of what you want when it comes to cleaning stormwater because you're basically channeling oil and fuel leaks, coolants, and all the other pollutants in our society. So what we've tried to do is incorporate more of a natural setting. Basically, you could sum it up as artificial wetlands in the landscape. An example would be a parking lot like this. Rather than gaining five extra parking spaces over here, we left the hardscape out and then created a bioswale to capture all the stormwater coming off this parking lot and route it to a detention basin. There's a whole bunch of different stuff out there from these bacterial drenches, the mycorrhizal fungi, to these uh, the bunker spawn with these mushrooms that will treat the hydrocarbons. Um, a lot of potential. The accessibility of this technology is what's so amazing. How fast uh, fungi can work and how fast they can molecularly rip apart these, these chemicals. And the fact that they have this uh, ability is just incredible. As the fungus breaks apart and releases these nutrients, they become available to bacteria and then they become available to plants. You see the succession happen over and over again. We can mimic this in damaged landscapes that have toxic chemicals, that have bacterial contaminations, where we bring in the, the, these healers, these fungal allies that set this in motion to create more of this symbiotic relationship with other organisms and then bring life back to these damaged areas. The mycelium is actually able to molecularly disassemble the hydrocarbons and break them down into smaller and smaller particles. This is the beginning of succession of the land being healed and turning back to an, a, a natural state. What people have implemented for microfiltration is subjecting the contaminated water to wood chips that have been inoculated with mycelium and that water as it filters through the wood chip mass is exposed to these uh, enzymes that the mycelium is secreting, effectively killing these harmful bacteria. They can actually kill uh, Salmonella and E. coli bacteria and different coliform bacteria with their mycelial web. Real life application is where the research is going now and where the experimentation is happening. This gives people a grassroots, hands-on method that they can implement themselves personally and that can be used on land, on our homesteads, on our farms, in our community and in industrial areas. When there is a tanker of uh, fuel that gets spilled, when there's a, you know, a crash, when Caltrans has to soak up walls of oil, when there's uh, contaminated water and pollutants leaking out from septics and farms, I feel like it's only our duty at this point to try to immediately clean up and hopefully halt more of the damage that's taking place, but at least as that's continuing to happen, these, these contaminated areas can be addressed. I often think about what the future of, of fungi will look like, what it'll look like when our culture becomes much more mycoliterate. Mycology offers so much and there's so much potential, the applications are, are at this point seemingly unlimited. It's like the Wild West. We don't know what else is out there to, to discover. We're really scratching the tip of the iceberg. No matter how I slice it, there's really nothing bad about working with fungi, that really everything they do is of great benefit.
through our human hands um, and intentions, we can cultivate fungi easily, more easily today than ever before, and intentionally place and apply fungi where they're needed, and basically really speed up uh, natural processes. So often we approach nature thinking that we already know everything, and then we usually mess more things up along the way. I think in the future, by observing and working with fungi, we'll have a much more holistic and systemic way of, of thinking about how the interconnectedness of, of the natural world, but also the, the rippling effect that all our human actions have. That's one of the primary lessons of fungi, is that everything is interconnected and everything relates and everything affects the whole. When we have a true mycoculture, the world will be unlike anything we know today.